me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are delighted that you've joined us in person or via Facebook Live and Zoom. And for those of you that are here in person, please uh, be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you very much. So right now, we're going to pray. Please join me. Here and now, right here and now, God is present, love is present, peace and goodness, kindness, compassion, intelligence and wisdom, all present with us right here. And why is that? Because it is God. That is God's nature. And knowing that, God is creating everything. I know that God's nature is within me, right within me, in that secret place of the Most High, residing there, always there. And not only in me, but in everyone, everywhere, all beings everywhere. And how great is that? So I know, I know right now that this service is the, the divine activity of spirit. And we are here together experiencing this, joining, learning, accepting. I know that Dr. Mark is that perfect vehicle through which spirit expresses. And we open our minds and we open our hearts right now and accept the message, the good that is God. I am so grateful for this, so very, very grateful for all of this. And I just say yes and release my word into the love and law that is God itself. And so it is, and all together we say, Amen. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still.
please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Everybody re remain standing for our congregational song. It's in every one of us to be wise. Find your heart, open up both your eyes. We can all know everything without ever knowing why. It's in every one of us. We're going to meditate for the next five minutes, and I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If your mind wanders, just bring it back silently repeating, God's the love that I am, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
these tools and on this ground we pray your will for us about as we grow a church of love and understanding let us grow strong enough to embrace all in kind. Let us grow a church of heart and mind. In this moment and in this space, in your presence, We ask for nothing for your will to flow through us and be fulfilled while the walls of fear that may have held us yesterday dissolve to dust upon the ground and simply fade away. And the to grow a church of love and understanding as we grow a church of peace as we build a enough to embrace all in kind. Let us grow a church of heart and mind. Let us grow a church of heart and Well, good morning. Thank you for being here with us. I really appreciate that you have showed up to be with us in person. As you can tell, we're trying to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. So I hope you will just continue to work with us in that vein. Um, I have notes here, but they are just not in order. Oh, here they are. Okay, I'm good. Sorry. Um, you know, in, uh, in the study of yoga, uh, there are different paths of yoga. There is devotional yoga, which is bhakti. And there's karma yoga, which is the yoga, the path of doing good works. And there's uh, jhana yoga, which is the yoga of, uh, of the intellect, of, of, of study. Uh, there are and so I look at this, um, and I think, well, you know, there are so many paths to God because God is the only place to go. I mean, this is something that we say again and again. There are many paths up the mountain, right? Yet all roads lead to the top eventually. You know? And I think this is what Ernest Holmes really loved and understood so well, is that he understood that you know, at the bottom of the mountain, all spiritual paths look very different, right? Because it's very much about outer practices and you know, what you wear or who you with or when you worship and what you eat. It's very externally driven, which is important because that gets people on the path. But then eventually, as you stay on the path and you start to move up the mountain, the paths all start to come together. 
And this is what Ernest Holmes really focused on in his teaching and his formulation of the science of mind. I think of it as above the tree line. You know, going up a mountain, you hit to the tree line where there's no more tree growth. And this is where all the paths really start to get to come together. And this is where Ernest Holmes really found and focused on what we consider to be the mysticism of the science of mind teaching. So perhaps the shortest and the easiest uh, path that we could be, is, be on is the path of love, which sounds very, very simple, doesn't it? That it, it is certainly um, the simplest. You know, you don't need any special knowledge. You don't need a lot of props or anything like that. Uh, no special circumstances, no special gifts. The path is open to everyone, regardless of personal circumstance or condition. So it's like, wow, that's great. So you live your life and try to be as awake and as conscious and as loving as possible, and I think that is absolutely a path up the mountain. So the love that we are talking about is not though a personal kind of love. It's bigger and more powerful than, than the personal sentiment that we're all very familiar with. So Emmett Fox, uh, who I love, metaphysical spiritual teacher, teaches that the principal aspect of God, the principal aspects of God are life, truth, and love. Those are the three primary qualities of God, of spirit. Um, so life is existence, and this is the truth of being. Divine life is expressing in us, as us, it is us, right? So love is the full and unrestricted expression of the divine life itself moving through us into expression. Now, obviously, the opposite of love is fear. We talk about that a lot, and fear is the supreme enemy of humankind. We got it. We got it. Fear is the enemy. Fear bad. I understand. So look at what we do and what happens in the world, though, because people are afraid. Wow, that's where a lot of decisions get made from, and maybe, maybe not the best. See, fear always turns out to be the absence of love. Now, the Bible says that fear hath torment, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So to me, what that says, if I could fill my mind and my heart with enough love, I wouldn't be afraid. And I'll tell you, honestly, there's all kinds of stuff that crops up in life and the world around me that could make me afraid. All kinds of stuff. So the reason we have fear, well, we just don't have love. You know, we, or maybe a better way to put it is we don't love God, the truth, enough. See, we don't make love being a loving presence in the world, our priority. So a great mystic said, love God and do what you will. Knowing that with the love of God in our hearts, our expression in life can only be perfect, right? So I've always heard in metaphysical teaching, you can get rid of any difficulty from your life as soon as you love God more than you love the error. <sighs> well, I don't think I love the error, do you? You don't love the error in your life, and yet, if I look, I have to say, okay, well, maybe there's some little bizarre way that I'm getting some value out of this, right? You know, maybe I don't have to grow. Maybe I don't have to show up fully. Maybe I don't have to, I don't know, whatever it might be. So have you ever put something on that was too tight, like a ring? You know, and you, oh, but I love this ring. I'm going to wear it anyway. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. And over time, you start to tingle. And then you look and you notice that you're a little blue. And then you realize that your finger's actually getting a little cold. Oh, it's really cold. Wow. I, you know, this is maybe not the best decision I've made. Um, you know that it's not good for you, right? Like, I know if I wear a ring on my hand, uh, which I am prone to do, but it's too tight, that good will not come from that, right? Uh, in fact, probably if I leave it on too long and ignore it, my finger will eventually fall off. <laughs> so I think the absence of love has the same effect on our soul. The negatives constrict the free flow of the spirit within us. The negatives constrict the free flow of love within us. So unless we build up a love consciousness within our own soul, the other things we do are actually going to be futile because your life is like your laboratory, just like mine is. And so we want to be in charge of our consciousness. We want to be in charge of how we're operating in the laboratory. And so this means that I have to absolutely expel any personal condemnation. Do, I must not allow myself to hate. 
It's just the enemy of our progress. It's the enemy of our growth. It's the enemy of our healing. You know, the way of love is the quickest way to get over all of our difficulties. And it elevates our consciousness, and it also elevates the world. Every time we choose love, to say something loving, to do something loving, the whole vibration of the planet goes up. Now, that seems like a really good thing to me, don't you think? Like, for our planet to become a more loving place, only if we want it to last yeah, it seems good. I think we are, we are destined, destined to become spiritually mature, deep thinking people. You know, in America, it could be said that we are, uh, well, we are often accused of being very superficial. Uh, at least we're concerned very often with superficial things. We say, well, what's the problem with that? Well, actually, there's, there's really not much of a problem with it for a while in anyone's life anyway. But you and I both know that what we give our attention to increases. And so if I keep giving my attention to the superficial things, to the things that I really know are not that important in my life, then that's what I'm going to get more of. Right? We don't cultivate... Um, being spiritually mature or being a deep person spiritually on our own, the universe actually gives us the opportunities again and again. Had you noticed that? How like, oh, another opportunity to love. Oh, and here's another opportunity to forgive. Those are endless, I find. Yes, it's true. Yeah, but life is very much about balance, right? So we want to balance light and the dark. We want to balance work and play. We want to balance the things we collect and the things we release in life, being active and resting focusing on fun and focusing on what's important. You know, it's all about balance. You know, in, in a garden, and I have been a gardener a good part of my adult life, um, I love the thrill of the flowers blooming. You know, that's, that's the part I like. I like the fragrance. I like the color. I like the big bang for my buck, you know. Shiny, shiny, shiny. That's me. Um, I don't even mind uh, the feeding, the watering, the weeding. Uh, that's all okay because, you know, it's just part of what you do for the payoff, for the good result. But I also know this. If I don't pay attention, the weeds will choke out the flowers. And before you know it, there will be almost no flowers at all. These weeds will just have run riot in my little garden. Now, in Science of Mind, we teach that there is only one power. But it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. So how, how does so much evil get spread around? Well, we know historically that often there have been cases where people were willing to look the other way. Mm -hmm. So we say, well, this doesn't really affect, they say, hey, you know, this doesn't really affect me. It's not my business. What can I do? I'm only one person. That's ignoring the weeds, right? That's ignoring the weeds. And what happens when we ignore the weeds is the flowers ultimately get choked out. So in Science of Mind, you know, we don't have a concept of a devil. But if there was a devil, uh, where the devil would have a condo would be in your mind. Yes, that's true. The devil's condo would be right between your ears, and that is not good news. Because what I mean by that is that the devil would be your thinking used against you. Now, you, maybe you have never done this, but I am well acquainted with my own thinking turned against me. You know, my very creative thinking, my mostly optimistic, uplifting, life-affirming thinking can sometimes go the other direction. I'm embarrassed about that. I can't even believe I said that in church. But, but I know, but that's the work, right? To catch myself when I go that way, that's not the way I want to go, and redirect myself, right? If the devil were in my mind, how would that manifest? It would manifest as me believing that I am not one with God, that love is not present, that this person or this circumstance is so special and so unique that spiritual laws and principles don't apply. I don't have to be my best spiritual self in this relationship. Therefore, I can justify acting without love in my life. That's the problem, right? See, that's the pow one power used in service of the darkness. And rather, rather than looking at it and saying, OK, there's one power, and I'm going to use that one power in service of love, in service of the light, almost innocently, uh, we, 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 hear, we see, hear ourselves saying something like, well, they said this, or they did that to me. Why should I have to be loving? Why should I have to be the conscious one? Well, this is why, and it actually comes to something that Emmett Fox wrote years ago, 
and it's one of my favorite things out of all his writing. And he says that if only you would love enough, you would be the most powerful person in the world. And my mind goes crazy with that. I want you, my human personality just goes, ah, are you kidding me? Blah, 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 blah. And then I sit with it and I become still and I think, that's the journey, to love more. And the more I love, the more I love, the more I love. You know, I'm getting ready to, um, in our school of ministry, I'm going to be teaching a class on spiritual leadership. And, and what I want to convey to these up-and-coming ministers is that the person in the room who loves the most is the most powerful person. The person in the room who can love the most is absolutely the most powerful person. So our mind always has a reason, right? A reason why other things are more important, a reason why we should not open our heart, a reason why we should not take down the barrier between us and other people with lots of things, peoples, groups. You know, we don't actively, intentionally hate them, but at the same token, although I don't actively hate perhaps some other groups or individuals, I have to look and say, but am I actively actively making a place for them in my heart, in my mind, in my consciousness. So to not hate them is just not enough. I have to actively expand my consciousness to include them as well and bring them in. You know, in Science of Mind, we teach, you know, there are no neutral thoughts. All thought is creating form at some level. We teach that from our very first foundation class. All thought creates form at some level. And so because we're all connected, it becomes really important for us to think of those people that we have the challenges with, the people, I wouldn't say, you know, enemy, but enemy, you know who I mean, whatever that is in your life, whoever that may be, um, that just intending no harm is not enough, not anymore, because we have done that. We have intended no harm and intended no harm and intended no harm, and, and, and that's better than intending harm, but we realize now it's actually not enough. You know, shallow is just the head, right? But deep includes our heart, includes our spiritual consciousness. So my head says this. My head says, oh, ignore them. Don't do this. Do that. You know, I mean, my... But I have to ask, if I could just get still and take a good breath, what would love do here? What would love do here? Because tell the truth, we often don't want to know what love would do here, Right? Sometimes I don't want to know. No, I don't want to ask that question. So come back to what we teach about spiritual principle. What's going on out here is simply a reflection of what's going on in here. So now, let's talk about COVID for a second. There is already a complete healing in the infinite mind of God for COVID. Whatever we need to know is already known in the mind of God. So everybody could be better, everybody could be healed, everybody could be going on with their life. But what we need to know is God is not saying, gee, I don't know, this COVID, it really stumps me. I just don't get it. I don't know how to make it go away. You know, in the mind of God, in the infinite mind, God has the healing, the cure, whatever it is we need to know, not only for COVID, but for everything else. Everything else that appears as a problem, that appears as a condition, that appears as disease on the face of the earth, the answer to that always exists. It exists already in the mind of God. And you say, well, why don't we have it? Why don't we have it? And I would say metaphysically because we don't love God enough. That's why. It's not that God's withholding because withholding does not exist in divine consciousness. But until we become a place where the answer, where the solution is welcome, until we become that place where healing is the most natural thing, it isn't going to happen, right? So if, I think of it like this. If all you ever read is People Magazine, and you know, sometimes People Magazine absolutely hits the spot, doesn't it? Yeah, People Magazine can be really good. But if all you ever read is People Magazine, Shakespeare is probably going to elude you. Mm -hmm, it is. They're just different levels. They're just different levels. And so in A Course in Miracles, it says that the problem is not that you don't believe in the power of love. The problem is that you don't believe in the power of love only. And I love that, that there is an enormous belief in separation from God in the world that we live in, right? And often we say that the problem is we believe that we are separate from God. You know, so the spiritual truth is we cannot be separate from God. Now, I know everybody has a fantastic imagination. We can create and have created some really amazing things in the course of our lifetime. You know, our mind is really, really powerful. So any problem, hey, we believe we're separate from God there. We believe we're separate from love. So in all this belief in separation, the question to ask is, 
What can I do to heal? What can I do to help? What can I do to add light to this situation? What can I do to bring some of the best of consciousness into this? So Mother Teresa said there are no great deeds. There are only small deeds done with great love. Now, we are all capable of small deeds with great love, and I think that's the place to start. Our world needs a lot of loving. Don't you agree? I mean, really, I mean, we all believe that love heals. Wouldn't we say that? That more and more love is more and more healing? Yes. So our world gets healed by us being more loving. Yay! Okay, that means I have something to do. You know, does God need there to be war or disease or poverty or hungry children or bombs on, you know, subways and all kinds of the crazy stuff like that? No, absolutely not. That does not need to happen for God in any way. We are all being used by God when we express the love that is inside of us. You know, and we are in a world right now that is hungry for love, don't you think? I mean, everybody I know, I mean, I hate that we can't hug right now, and part of why I hate that is because I so want to be with my people, you know? I honestly believe that God has great things to do through each of us. We would not have come here unless God intended to do something significant through each of us. And we start where we are, you know, with who is in our life today. Deep is putting God first. So let's do that now while we pray together. Let's turn our attention inward for a moment and take a breath. Breathe in the infinite love of God and on the exhale, release anything unlike that. And again, breathe in God's infinite healing love and exhale whatever it is that weighs on your mind today. And one more, breathe in the perfection of God, the perfection of the principle that we work with. And exhale any fear or doubt or belief in separation. Just let it go. So in this awareness of our oneness with God and our connection with each other, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we know that love is the order of the day. That as we become more and more loving, we become more and more powerful, effective people in the world that it can only be that our life gets better the more loving we become, that our bodies get healed, that our relationships improve, that our work is more fulfilling. As we are more and more surrendered to be a vessel for God's love on the face of the earth, I know that everything gets better. And so I speak this word for our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we hold near and dear, and we pull them into our hearts. And we know that right where they are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite spirit is right there. Healing, blessing, restoring, renewing, creating right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in. So imagine with me now a light emanating from you out into the world, surrounding our globe, touching all people everywhere, everyone, leaving no one out. This is how big the love of God within us is that we have a capacity to include everyone, everywhere, regardless of circumstance or condition. Because I know the truth is, on the unseen side of life, there is only one, and we're all it. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are raised up by being together today in consciousness. So whatever it is, whatever area of your life or whatever loved one you're thinking of who's in need of healing, I would invite you to see that person, that situation, that part of your own life in your mind's eye right now. See it as whole, healed, perfect, complete in every way. And know with me that God absolutely supports that perfect healing. The universe says yes. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say, thank you, God. This is the truth for each and every one of us. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. So grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so 
grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Margaret Owen, everybody. Thank you, Margaret. She's so magnificent. I just, I just love it. Fantastic. And you can get Margaret's music at margaretowens.com. I have it. It's great. And uh, that message today, Dr. Mark, thank you. Love more, love more, love more. I, you know... Okay, we have some announcements. If this is your first time at our church, uh, we are delighted that uh, you are here. And please stop by at the welcome table on the patio <clears throat> to pick up a packet of information 
just for you. Ways you can make donations. So you can call the office at 818-762-7566. You can go to nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. Prayer with a Practitioner uh, is available after uh, service in person and on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney, January 12th. The meditation starts at 6.50 p.m. and the service is at 7 p.m. And Reverend Sidney's uh, topic this week is willing to perceive and believe. Youth church. The, our youth church is open on Sundays uh, for our 9.45 a.m. service, and we welcome youth of all ages. Grief support group. This group, facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur, meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. 2022 Goal Sheets. Goal Sheets are available on the patio and on our website. Please complete uh, self, uh, self address and stamp and return the envelope to the goals box or to the church if you have access uh, to, uh, if you have the access sheet online. Sorry. <laughs> um, we'll mail it back to you uh, December 2022. I had cataract surgery, but I can't see a thing anymore. <laughs> I can't even read this. <laughs> Why did I have it? Uh, a, a circle healing of healing on Zoom, Sunday, January 16th. Thank you. Lights <laughs> at 1 p.m. Um, join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart as she gently guides you via your chakras in a loving healing experience. The Zoom link can be found on our website under the ceiling, a circle of healing information. <laughs> Quick start class with Dr. Mark Vieira. Three Sundays, January 16th, 23rd, and 30th in 2022. That's coming up. 12 noon to 1.30 p.m., and it's Zoom only. This is an introduction to the background and basic principles of the religious science philosophy and is a required class to become a member of the North Hollywood Church, and the cost is free. Our bookstore is closed today and will reopen next Sunday. So um, there, after the service, we have our Zoom virtual patio. That's before and after uh, both Sunday and Wednesday services. And we have our Zoom meditation every morning on Monday uh, through Friday, at 8 a.m. Please visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. That's it. So now, please <laughs> rise as we join in the peace song. Excuse me. Yeah. 
please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you.